Brian. And I'm Bruce. And uh, welcome to episode nine of Just Beneath nine. the Surface. Nine. Wow. Bruce, why don't you remind our viewers, or maybe the people who are coming here for the first time, what is Just Beneath the Surface? No one's coming here for the first time, because wow. they're all here already. But in any event, they'll come when they hear this, this episode nine. It's about Just Beneath the Surface, a tribute or homage, or whatever you want to call it, to Rod Serling's The Twilight Zone, which ran for five years. Five seasons. Five seasons, whatever. And myself and Brian love the show. We love Rod Serling. We like the stories, that sort of thing. And we try to sometimes equate it to current events and all that because we certainly had a lot of social commentary in his episodes, at least we believe so, which we think still apply today. And we're going to do something a little different this episode. Call it a point-counterpoint, if you will. <laughs> Jane, you! Yes, exactly, <laughs> because there is one episode that has divided Bruce and I right down the middle. He thinks it's one of the best episodes ever written. He'll tell you. He'll be the first to tell you he's got a script from this thing. I do. He's got a script. It's not the actual script that they used on set or whatever, is but it, it's a it's so, a script. Well, it's one of the ones that maybe some guy had. Or is something. it signed by somebody? Is no, it it's signed? not. Okay. It's not like my friend here with all the signatures of stars and all that sort of stuff. I but, live in a cubby hole but the, by myself. The episode in question is from season two, and it's called The Howling Man. Oh. The Howling Man, yes. Now, Bruce, the expert, since you've uh, got the script, who wrote this episode? Oh, I think it's, uh, was it Charles Beaumont? Well, I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. So. I'm not sure. It wasn't Serling. I know that. It, but, was either, it was either Houghton, Jim, I think his name Jim Houghton. Or, probably one of the mainstays. Yeah, one of the mainstays that writes some of the other episodes for The Twilight Zone. It wasn't Serling, and Serling didn't even direct this one. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure he had some oversight, and, you know, he does the initial saying at the beginning and at the end and all that sort of stuff, but it was Bowman or, or Houghton. But, but, to, anyway. but to our main point, main Bruce, point. And, and I think most fans in the Twilight Zone community, I think they rank this as one of the better episodes. They love Bruce, you like it a lot. I, I, put, it, I put it in the top ten for me, probably. It's tough when you rate, you guys know, if you like the Twilight Zone, tough to rate these Twilight Zone episodes about, here's the best one and here's, you know. For me, I think it's okay. I think it's kind of slow. I don't think it's at that great of an episode. It's one of those ones I think you just watch and you kind of forget about it and maybe it comes on a few years later. Oh, I remember that episode. Like Brian's life. But... <laughs> But you don't go out of your way to see it. At least I don't. And I think it can be a little slow in times, and it can be a little dull. Bruce is going to argue. For example, how does this episode begin? Let's let's begin. Let's give you okay. the scene. It takes place in modern day, and modern day in this episode is 1964. Right. Where our main character, his name is David Ellington. H. M. Wynette. Yes, that's okay. the actor. They've okay. uh, they've obviously kind of put some old age makeup on him for the modern day sequence. Right. He's got some gray in his hair. And, sort of uh, like me. Right. And they've got the camera tilted in the Batman angle. You know, it's like this, and he's saying, I know what you're going to believe. You're not going to believe what I say. It's very, very crazy, but it's true. It was many years ago. I was on a walking, walking tour of Europe, walking. and this happened. And it's still in a storm. But, and the camera angle is like this. But... Okay, then they do the, the, the flashback, the transition back, and it's, it's right after the He's end of the First the door. World War. And he walks up to the door of the monastery where this whole thing takes place, yes. and, and they say to him, what are you doing here? And he says, I'm on a walking tour of Europe. And that's the problem I have. We, the audience, already know this, because he told us that in right. modern time. Why do we have to be told twice that he's on a walking tour of Europe? It bores me that they couldn't get around that one way or the other. And instead, we have to listen to him telling us his life story again. Yeah, but he didn't tell Jerome's assistant that. He told the lady that, who was in the modern times, that we're supposed to keep the they, devil in the thing. But they he, hadn't told, he hadn't told Jerome's assistant there that, yes, so he had to say it. Now, the fact that you have to listen to it twice, in, in, that's life, my friend. In the beginning, well, I'm listening to you say things over and over again. <laughs> but in the Whatever. In, exactly, three. <laughs> But in the beginning, when he's when he's telling us right as the episode starts, he doesn't need to tell us he was on a walking tour. Of the okay, they can get into that, and that kind of sets the tone for me. It's like okay, they're already boring me ten, two minutes in. So he, he's knocking on. We're, we're back now at the end of the second world, at the end of the right. first world war. Yeah, he's knock, knocking on the monastery door because, yeah. as we've established, he's on a walking tour of Europe. Now I'm getting bored. <laughs> And the, the he's, I guess he's right on that point. <laughs> he said it four times already. Come on, what's your next point? The door is answered by Brother Jerome. Is that his name? No, it's asked by one of his assistants. One of his assistants. Yeah, I forget his name. Um, 
Jeremiah, well, it doesn't matter. One of his Jerome's assistants, you know, okay. with the big long beard, the robe, and the and okay. carrying the Riddler staff. Well, that's what Jerome has. But go ahead. Yeah. It's, it's an assistant. Go ahead. And uh, he tells him that he's seeking shelter from the storm. And, we and take no visitors at the Hermitage. No, go away. So uh, what happens next? Next to it, he goes. I'll go talk to Brother Jerome. And he, so he comes in and he goes back and he's uh, well. Ellington walks in. And Jerome comes out and says, you can't stay here. We have no facilities for the sick or whatever. And you must leave. You must leave now. And so Ellington turns around and he's walking in. And he just, from his exhaustion, yeah. on a walking trip for, from in Europe five times, he just he collapses on the floor. And that's one of my points of why I like this movie. I like this episode. And there's great sayings in it. And Serling starts off and goes, the prostate form of David Ellington. The seeker of truth, and regrettably, the, the finder, finder of truth. See, I remember that he line. Will, he, okay. Mm -hmm. He will soon rise from exhaustion to confront the problem that has haunted man for all time. Now, Bruce, I, I think that's just a great saying. You know, the seeker of truth, and regrettably, the finder. That's, to me, that's, I saw pathos, I forget what it's called, but I, I like that. That's good. Now, Bruce, I want to take this opportunity okay. before you go any further. I okay. just want to remind you what we always say to our viewers is that we're not going to spoil the endings of these episodes. No. So no matter what is going to happen later on, we're not going to tell you that. You're going to have to watch it for yourself. No. Who is the Howling Man, and why would they want to keep him under lock and key? That's what you're going to have to find out for yourself. Well, we're going to, we have to explain who the Howling Man is. Please do. I think so. But okay, so was that your first barrage on me? Yes. yes. Okay. No. Can I give you my barrage? You did not. Feel okay. free. Okay, but it's not going to be... But the point is that one of the reasons I, or main reason I think I like this episode is that I like the idea of Satan. <laughs> what did I just say to you a minute ago? <laughs> what? What did what? I just say what? to you a minute ago about us not ruining the endings of these episodes? Oh, what? That's not it. We would have to say that. For, and listen, like I said in another, in a previous episode of Just Beneath the Surface, uh -huh. if there's anybody out there that's watching the show that has not seen The Howling Man from 40 years ago, then I'll give you a million dollars. Write me. No, I, so well, I'm kidding. He's but, kidding. God, I guess our producer said that's, I, could, I could have to you pay him. you get in trouble for that, right? yes. Okay, but that. anyway, I like the I idea of good and make, evil. I think we can make an exception in this case. Because okay, then I like the idea of Satan, and to match it to the current times, I think, I, I think it's so applicable at times, because to me, you don't it's, know where Satan's hiding. You don't know what door he's behind. In, in another movie, The Prince of Darkness, John, John Carpenter, whatever, he goes, Satan hides in the smallest of particles. And he does. Whether, whether he creates a war in Ukraine or, and that's what I think it is. And if you watch this episode, you can see it when Jerome and Ellington are going at it. Is there a devil? No devil. Uh, you can get it going. I think there is. I think there is a devil. Why? And I think he, he creates this. You, Russia invading Ukraine, Democrats hating Republicans, blacks hating whites, all this sort of stuff like this, and the devil, like in the Ozzy Oddball song, War of Pigs, is sitting back going, I don't care if Ukraine or Russia wins, I don't care if the Republicans or Democrats win, I don't care if blacks or whites win, I don't care. just keep fighting, mm -hmm. just keep fighting. And I see this episode, I see it so true that that's what it is, and you watch and go, and that's when Ellington and Jerome have that discussion later on about, is there really Satan in there, or is it that you hear howling away, and that's why it's called the Howling Man, whatever, and Jerome's like, it's just a man. Why, why. To that point, why is he howling all through the episode? Because he's trying to, I think, get uh, I know Ellington's... Why I know why I'm howling, because I'm bored, but why is he I think howling? He's trying, I think he's trying to get Ellington's attention, but you hear later on when they're discussing it, they're saying, well, he's been howling a lot, and maybe that's just him. I yeah. mean, I and guess I, if I was locked up and couldn't get out of a cell... I had to either go crazy or howl or do something. And I think when I, I don't first, know. when I first saw it, maybe I was young enough, maybe I thought he was a werewolf or something. I no. didn't understand the whole Satan concept. Why would you have a, a, well, a man howling in a jail cell? Well, maybe cell? that's why we, we went like this, because as I just explained, I, I think that that episode is so applicable today. And I truly believe it is. If you could believe in God, I think you've got to believe in Satan. And Satan's the one pushing the buttons going, you hate that person. You dislike that person. You screw this person over. You be America's best eyeglasses and try to deceive people and steal their money. And I don't care if I do. And it's the last dollar. And that's that's what happens. And that's probably my biggest point. And I just 
I like a lot of movies like that where it shows the, the satanic part of how they're taking over or how they're controlling man. Man lets them. And one of the best things he says in this, at the end, and I hate to say it because it was my other, he goes, when he, when he releases them, he takes off the thing, yeah. and I'm getting ahead of him, he goes, he goes to Jerome as he's out on the floor, because he, he goes, I saw him, and I didn't recognize him. And Jerome goes, that is man's weakness and Satan's strength. And that is so, to me, that is so true today, that everybody thinks they're doing the right thing. Oh, my cause is great, it's so good. And all the devil's going is, it may be, and yours may be too, but just keep fighting. Just keep, and that's why, and... Let me, let me go back, though, just one second, though. Enough of that one. Enough of that. And I, I want to talk about the acting in this episode. I oh, think that's another okay. detriment to me. I, oh. think, I think a lot of it is over the top, especially the character of Ellington. I just think he's... Oh, I thought you were going to say Jerome. Well, Jerome, too. I mean, that's another With point. the long beard. The long beard. The staff of truth. I mean, who's he, is he playing? Just like if you get the staff of truth. Like in, a, like in an auction in, or something? In, yes. It's like he just stepped out of a, a, a Raiders of the Lost Ark movie. I mean, he, he's got right. the full, uh, or, or the Ten Commandments or whatever. I mean, he looks like Moses walking around in this episode. Yeah, it's, but just, it's just too cheesy. It, it's distracting. It takes my mind off the story. Okay. He's I, got more hair than the devil does. He does. He's the howling until, man. Until, is, until the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'll say this in defense of that, that and I'll say this to you know, all the people, that you name any movie you love, I'll pick it apart. Point by point by point by point. Just the same thing as you just said. Well, that's mm -hmm. cheesy. Look at that outfit. Oh, yeah. what are you kidding? That could never happen. This is a guy who I, likes Motel Hell. Motel Hell. That's a great movie. That's a true movie. Mm -hmm. But I, to your point about it's cheesy, yeah. you, I, we're not going to do it here because we don't have time. But if you tell me your favorite movie, I'd whip it to death. With yeah. it, that's cheesy. That's, it's, it, it's one of the posters upstairs. Is it? Yeah. Airplane? One of them. Okay, I, and I love, I love Airplane too. But I will say this, that, and this is, a, this, is so, this is a Rod Serling sort of thing, that if you like something, you're, you're obviously going to start saying, well, that's great, that's great, that's great. I, like, I like it. And you're going to not look at the bad things about it, the, the cheesy parts, the things that don't work. But if you don't like something, like my, my wife doesn't like Gano Reeves. So any movie can, Ooh, look at that stupid, that's stupid. But you get her show she likes, too. Oh, that's great. <laughs> And even though it has stupid things in it too, so that's so I think you just don't like the whole thing. It sets you off, and so it, any it, little thing now that like, and I thought just the opposite. The act, I thought the Ellington Wynick, or the acting was great. I thought Jerome John Carradine. John Carradine is very is good, and he yeah. plays a great part. He's, and when he goes, he's playing the typical John Carradine role. In the yes, show, he so. is. And when he goes through about talking about you know. God and Satan and all this sort of stuff and you know man creates most of his own problems we don't need him around to you know now that he's caught we don't have the great world wars and the nuclear things and you know, you know mm -hmm. that's what it's just but anyway you take another shot well okay let's talk about some other things from this episode like uh, the, the the scene at the very end after <laughs> after the devil has been released he's please let him go we, we, we come back to modern times right. and and what has happened? Once oh. again, despite having learned his lesson, I, I know I'm spoiling it here for the audience. It's okay. Saying, but once again, they have led Satan back onto the world a second time, right? Right. The late, yeah, Why didn't we, they learn anything the first time? The whole point of this episode is he spent 40 years trying to find Satan, <laughs> tracking him down, and now he's finally got him locked in the broom closet. I, I will give you that. They let him go again. I will give you that, my friend. Even a lover of that episode, I will say that because he, he leaves yeah. a, a woman there, supposedly who's the maid or somebody, and you go... You're tracking him down for like 30, 40 years. You're not going to leave this woman here. He goes, I'll only be gone for a few minutes. But he goes, I want to be gone for two seconds. Whatever. And he's like, says like six times. Like why? You said, like and you why? said the thing about what you said at the beginning of this episode. You said something five times. But yeah. um, and why? Ellington goes, don't let him out. Don't touch that bolt. And it's like a little staff of truth yeah, now. Like, it's like a little thing like this holding him in. It's a toothpick. Why, why, are they, toothpick. why are they even keeping him alive? I mean, I don't, I you probably, well, you probably, can't, can't, probably can't kill well, Satan. But why would you? And now you're going into my realm, Bruce's realm. Yeah. You can't kill Satan, just like you can't kill a vampire. Well, you, you can, can destroy keep, a vampire. You can keep him in a room closet. Because a vampire's already dead. So mm -hmm. how are you going to kill him? I see what you're saying. Okay. But I think he's like Satan, same after, thing. If I spent 30 to 40 years tracking down Satan, he'd be in a bank vault. He wouldn't be in a broom <laughs> closet. Yeah. But uh, no, when I'm at a bank vault, you need the staff of truth. Yeah, uh, love but it. But again, that goes back to our other point. And I do give Brian that, because even when I saw that, I go, that's a, 
Oh, we'd have to even even a worse thing. I'll be on your side when Ellington first lets him out. There's a huge staff of truth, and he goes to get him at the near the end of the thing to let the let Satan out. He doesn't know it's Satan. He goes, I don't believe Jerome. I don't believe. He's it, and he goes and go. How can I get you out of here? How can I get you out of here? He goes, lift up that bolt, and it's a staff of truth or one of the. He goes, why didn't you do it yourself? He could just because he could just reach through and lift it up himself. Why didn't you do it yourself? And I'm going, that's right, Ellington. Get, 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 don't you see that? He could have. And, they, and the devil goes, do it right now, really quick, quick, they're going to kill us all, kill us all. And like a lot of people in their tense situations, he just did it. But I'll give you even that, even doing that was kind of like, that, that wouldn't happen in real life. But again, I'll tell you, just tell me, any, show me any movie. I'll do it. I'll, I, I will make that million dollar price. I can knock down any movie you love the I, same way. But the, I will say this right now, Bruce. Okay. I have enjoyed listening to you talk about the episode more than I enjoyed watching the yeah. episode. Because even though I, 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 and I did see your points about where that's a little cheesy. How could that happen? And that why would he put him in like a little with a little staff of truth like this? But I mean, for me, I take away the bigger thing. I think the bigger thing that it's you see it today. Say, huh? and say Satan. Say Satan. What was that Saturday Night Live? Saturday Night Live oh, yeah. I forget who did that. Dana Carvey. Dana Carvey. That was a great one. Say, what did he say again? Say. Remember, what does he say? It was always a build up. Oh, who could be? Who could that be that made me do that? Satan. Mm -hmm. Satan. That's well, isn't that special? But I also liked all the sayings in the movie, which uh, several of the sayings, like, you know, when Drum goes, he was always there at the bad moments in history and all that sort of stuff, or whatever. And I do he think. Was, yeah. And part of my thing is, number one, are, are we to believe them, though, that because Satan was released after the First World War, that everything that happened for the next 40 years was Satan's fault? Like, we were talking about World War II, we are talking about the rise of Hitler, Nazism, and, and everything bad that happened until 1962. Right, that's, what, that's what Drew Jerome says. He goes, the terrible war, World War I, World War II. That's the thing. Obviously, he didn't talk about Vietnam or Korea because that hadn't happened yet. So it? then, if Satan were uh, around today, what things would he have caused? COVID nineteen, perhaps? Is he Poss responsible? Possibly, for that? But, but but what he does is he causes man himself to injure themselves. Uh -huh. I mean, why do why do we argue about? I mean, we're, this is a good argument, but why do people like hate each other? Why are there serial killers? Why are there pedophiles? Why are there wars? Why do some countries think they can take over another country? Why did we take this country over from the Indians? Say, <laughs> say, do it, or whatever. But I mean, and I think the first thing I said was he lives in the smallest power. You can have like a huge thing like the Ukraine war, and, and he causes that. Or you can cause a little thing like your neighbor who you can't stand, who just backed into your car and put a dent in it, and he goes, I didn't hit it. Well, you, gotta, you get a video right there of him. He goes, I didn't do it, and I'm not paying. So go. Well, now, now that I think about it, this episode really has religious overtones to it. Oh, well, yeah. Do you think I think could, so. Do you think you could do an episode like this today? Would it play well in yes. modern audience? Yes. The idea I, of Satan no, well, causing all the world's problems? No, n no, not of all the world's problems, because even Jerome says, man causes a lot of his own woes himself. We don't need Satan to make it worse. Right. Whatever. So man causes his own thing, and that goes into the whole thing of, is man intrinsically evil? Is man is, if, he, if there's no God or Satan, would but, we still have world wars? Would we still have people hating each other, blacks and whites and all that? Would we have all that? I think so, because I think man, like they say on Planet of the Apes, is not a good feast. He's also really, by Rod Serling. Yes! Mm -hmm. He gets, the, he beat me. I'll give it. <laughs> I didn't know you knew that. Of course. He sure. did. He, he, wrote wrote, he, yeah, he didn't write the whole thing. No, no. No, he wrote uh, t the tell. Um, he had to have written the five, last five minutes, though. I mean, that's, that's, that's traditional. A, that's scrolling. right. Scroll, scroll 29, verse 6, I think it is. Damn you all! Damn you all to hell! And that's just the thing. That's what happens when you either have man or Satan. But in any event, I'll give you those two thoughts. I think there's a bigger picture why, there. Why? And I do like the sayings. I like castles, too. Castles. Whatever. What else did I like? I forget. I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's probably a good point to wrap it up, then. Yes, that so, I don't know what I'm saying. You don't know what you're saying. No, I think but it's I, good. I think it's an episode worth watching, and I think I think the acting is very good, and I don't think it's over the top. I and mean, I, I stand by everything I've said in this episode, and the views of the speakers on this program do not necessarily represent <laughs> the views of YouTube. Yeah, and, and somebody going, you be dead, that's not over the top. If it's, you know the Twilight Zone, you know what you be dead is from. Come on! Dead. You'll be dead, you You'll gopher. Be dead. Was that the three-headed three three -headed gopher? gopher? Yes, little oh Anthony. Wait a minute. Yes, so now that we've talked about the Howling Man, now that we've dissected that, and I have thoroughly proven that it's boring. That's not. I think we, it's need, not. I think we need to remind the viewers. Well, no, it's, it's boring to Brian. Mm -hmm. 
That's fine. And it's good. If you, some it's, people like, you know, olives and some people don't. It's, it's whatever you like. It's good you know? that I don't like it. It's, it's, real good. it's real good that he doesn't like it or whatever. Because if he did like it, then I'd go. You'd be right. Right. So this is the point where we remind you, the viewers, that we'd like for you to do a few things for our channel, if you think about it. Uh, first, we would like you to subscribe, and that's a very easy thing to do, just find the subscribe button. Please. We also want you to hit the notification bell. That will let you know when we've got new uh, videos. Like this one, episode 9. And we also want you to like us. Like us on YouTube, like us on Facebook. That's a tough one. That's yeah. a tough one. Good luck with that. If I mean, you need any help, don't come to me. Sometimes we don't even like each other. No. I mean, because... Again, I hate putting him down, but I won this episode. Although I said he won because he got the Planet of the Apes thing. How does, how does the Howling Man go again? What do you mean? What does he say? What does he do all through the episode? <laughs> and I think that's a good place. I am Brian. I'm Bruce. And we are just beneath the surface. Take care.